What's up everyone, it's Kenny Fong. So a little while ago I purchased the Theowane Durga 4 and compared it to the Jody Jazz DV. I appreciate everyone who commented on it and said their opinions or their experiences with the mouthpiece. I thought that was super beneficial and hopefully that'll help someone in the future in deciding a mouthpiece for themselves. It's been a little while now, so I wanted to give my opinions on the Durga 4 now that I've had some time to play on it. The issues you may have heard in the first video, such as the resistance, the squeaking, the altissimo, they've kind of all been fixed now and I wanted to kind of, you know, talk about what the Durga 4 really brings to the table. First off, something many of you guys did point out in the video before, I did switch to a size 3 reed. The size 3.5 was causing all the resistance and it made it very difficult to play and a lot of people pointed out like switching to a softer reed is going to fix those issues, which it did. However, since I've switched to size 3 reeds, they seem to not last quite as long as the 3.5s. I used to be able to play on a 3.5 reed for what felt like 2 or 3 months and it would still sound great whereas the size 3 kind of depreciates in quality pretty quick it seems like. Let me know if you know why that is. It could be the brand I'm using. I'm using Van Dorn red box reeds. I am thinking of trying out the Boston uh, sack shop reeds pretty soon though. So the main thing I love about the Theowane Durga 4 is this, the sheer power that comes with it. So I play with a lot of different people on the scene and something they've all said is how much more present I am on stage and that my sound cuts through a lot harder and they're able to hear me on stage which kind of previously they weren't able to hear me unless I was blasting through a monitor or something and I always wondered if that was just my air support or if that was like a hump I couldn't get over with on-stage performing but this has proven me wrong where it feels like I can really just push the mouthpiece and the projection acoustically is so much louder and so much more full and I, I absolutely love it. Finally the altissimo on the Durga 4 is so clean and so powerful. I used to really struggle to hold out altissimo notes specifically altissimo B which I'm gonna quickly find a video that I can show you. You always hear me squeak when I tried to hold that note out, which really bugged the crap out of me because musically, obviously, you don't want any squeaks like that. Thanks to the Theowane, I can now hold out those altissimo notes much longer. I can also now play ridiculously high into altissimo, almost a full octave higher. To give you an example, the highest I was comfortable playing before was E flat. I could push out a altissimo G, like for a party trick, but overall, like going higher than G, I always wondered how people were able to do that. But now I can do it. Now I can go into the Lenny Picker range a little bit and I still need to refine a little bit but let me show you what I mean. Anyways, I want to give you guys all an update on where I was with the mouthpiece. Again, I don't want to say it was all the Theowane mouthpiece. I don't want to throw Jody Jazz on the bus here. <laughs> Obviously, those are great mouthpieces too. And I do want to try a Jody Jazz in an 8. Just to see if I can get the same results out of a similar facing. Because I think facing does make a big difference. And I want to make sure, you know, I, I give the mouthpieces equal playing field. Well, it's about time for me to get going. I actually have a studio recording session for Jake and the Heist. We got an upcoming album. Most of the stuff you've heard on this channel has actually been all me at home, which I think sounds fine. I'm very curious to see what a professional studio and a professional sound engineer can bring to the table. Thought I'd bring you guys along to see how the mouthpiece performs, as well as give you a sneak peek at the upcoming Jake and the Heist album. Let's get going. There he is. It's the day. <laughs> Shut up about the sun! I really do. It just destroys everything. Sun's good for you. I go outside once a week, whether I want to or not. What? That's it? <laughs> Why is that like your first reaction? Like, you see a camera? Wow! How did I have cameras? Why did I invite you guys? You guys are like our parents, and we're just gonna argue back here. Are we there yet? So it's just at his house? I'm trying to see this place. Trying to drop a Jolly Rancher out of your pocket. Hey, this shirt looks great. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Ooh, we're like going into the wilderness.
I've got a second mic set up. Looking at the wall. Oh, cool. But I quite often when I do all when I do woodwinds generally, I like to have a real focused mic. Yeah. And then this other one. And then you can kind of stretch it. You know, I mean, it really you can really stretch the sound. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. So. The track's going to be right here. Okay. So you're hearing yourself, right? Yeah. Definitely. Thank you. Give me some more horn. saxophone stuff yeah i know there's the main uh bridge part there's three parts yeah and then once we start doing the hit stuff it's four do you want to start with the I'd, layered stuff or start with just like the the ending yeah we start with the ending yeah that one felt better yeah let's listen we're gonna listen right here if i think the first two are awesome let's just make sure this is as tight as you want it to be yeah. well, i won't slide into it i think that'll tighten it up okay Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, here we go for real. Dude, that was, that was killer. Yeah. Let's get a better one. I spent a huge chunk of the recording session trying to nail this altissimo line. The key that it's in and where it sits on the horn is so tricky to nail. I felt like we spent quite a while trying to get a perfect take and then finally... I think we got it, man. There was uh, about two or three takes ago, it was really pretty epic, so we're good. I got it, number nine. I'm gonna put those on top. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's a wrap. <laughs> Freaking dabs. Yeah. <laughs> Did he dab? Yeah. Oh, now he's. That's, that's, that's great. That'll, that'll make our band cool. <laughs> now we, we powered through it. Dude. Amazing. What is this mic? You did it. How do you feel, Jake? Are you a proud papa? I feel Good. <laughs> hey, language. <laughs> language. I gotta bleep that out. TV fourteen. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, that, that felt good. And yeah, watch your freaking mouth, man. The new uh the new mouthpiece is doing its job, huh? Oh yeah. yeah. So that's gonna be it for this video. If you guys wanna hear how the saxophone sounds after it's mixed, be sure to follow Jake and the Heist. I'll put the Spotify link down below so you can catch that right when it's released. I'll probably do a comparison video to see how my at-home studio sounds compared to professional with a professional mix. I'm sure there's gonna be a huge difference. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video as well as subscribe for more content. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.